Hello, welcome back to this channel. And uh, today we're gonna cover the second lecture in, in inverse Laplace transform. And the last lecture we covered the inverse Laplace transform for the um, proper function either have simple poles means all the poles are different from each other, uh, or the if the uh, uh, or the uh, rational function has um, the complex poles. Complex poles means the poles are complex numbers, right? And today we're going to cover uh, three uh, topics. As always, we, uh, you may you will find the link to the Google Colab notes for this lecture in the description down below. And feel free to leave some comment. Uh, today we're going to cover three uh, topics. The first one is the sum of residues, which is very useful. Actually, this is the one I I used last lecture. I didn't mention that. Uh, I found some error there. Um, I corrected it for the residues, but somehow I still had the, in the uh, in the final um, the uh, the time domain function. But I'm gonna uh, talk about that uh, as we uh, as we go through these uh, examples. Uh, some actually left in a comment on that why uh, the residues kind of changed there um, when we uh, did the tra the inverse Laplace transform into time domain, and that was a typo. Uh, uh, so uh, they, we're going to look at two special cases. The first special case is that what if the um, fs, the function, the rational function is improper. Improper means the order of the numerator is equal to or greater than the order of the denominator or the degree of the denominator. So that's the m. We use the m to integrate the degree of the order of the numerator. We use the n to indicate the uh, degree of the um, denominator polynomial, right? So the second special case is that what if we have multiple poles? Multiple poles means we have a repeated pose or multiple identical poles in that one uh, position, uh, one uh, pole position. So uh, let's first look at the sum of residues. And let's see the uh, fs we can uh, right in the uh, two polynomials, right in the rational function of two polynomials, we can also do the partial fraction expansion. We just did that last lecture. If fs is for ss is proper, right? Uh, so in that case, we can uh, do the uh, uh, do the uh, 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 partial fraction expansion uh, proper with simple pole. That would see. With simple poles, and in this case, we would have if we had multiple poles, as we said, the uh, sum of residues would be not applicable, I believe. And um, let's see um, the rules for the the sum of residues. So they, let's see the rules for um, the rules for key one plus key two plus a key a, it, there is there's a very useful result there, key n. So this would be either equal to zero or equal the uh, scale factor we call the bm over a n. And with, under what condition, and on this condition here is if the m um, plus one is less than, is less than n, and in this case is if m plus 1 is equal to n. Right? So m is less than n for sure. That's for the function, for the rational function to be proper. right? Uh, so let's, let's see why this is the case. So let's multiply this, uh, uh, the s uh, using this, this one first and multiply by s and take the limit at, as s approaches to infinity. And we know for the um, uh, for the function that the highest order will denominate will dominate the others, right? So therefore, uh, this would be equal to s times the b m. So this will dominate the others if we take if as s uh, approaches to infinity. So we will have b m times m uh, to the power of m over a n to the power s n. Or I can write this as so this is going to be equal to bm over an 
and take the limit of s goes to infinity let's see if i have a s uh, one over so s minus n to the power n minus m plus one right And we know this one here, and this is going to be equal to, this one is going to be equal to uh, zero, right? Is it going to be equal to zero if n is greater than m plus one, or m plus one is less than n, right? So, uh, so if this is equal, that means the limit s, so this will become one, so this will be bm over a n if this s if n is equal to m plus one so that means if the old if the degree of the numerator of the denominator of polynomial is is higher than the degree of the uh, numerator polynomial by one so this limit is equal to the scale factor which is the high the coefficient of the highest order uh, highest order um, uh, term in the numerator divided by the de the coefficient of the highest order of a term in the numerator in the denominator polynomial, right? So let's look at if we use the partial fraction expression, this one here, and take the limit of what we get. This one is really easy, right? So that means you can take uh, that's going to be equal to s to infinity, uh, so times one times s, so that we divided by. Uh, 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 times s so that I can divide that by s on the numerator and denominator so I get these terms p1 over s plus p1 s minus p1 over s s1 over 1 minus p1 over s right? um, plus k2 over 1 minus p2 over s and plus kn over s minus 1 minus pn and as s goes to infinity those terms will become would become uh, uh, would become as uh, this term will become a zero right so therefore we have this going to be equal k1 plus k2 plus da 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 so this is the sum of the residues and the sum of the residues, and since these two will be equal, and therefore this one here is going to be equal to this, right? So that's the, that's how. Um, actually, this 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 is really useful. Let's look at the reason that how I found the error in the last lecture, the part two B. Uh, so at time, I think I want to derive that as. First, this is the function, this is the proper function, right? So this is a proper function. In this case, the bm is one. So the an is, uh, an is one, right? So the high, the coefficient of highest order, which is s squared, so that's one. So the a, bm over an is, is one. And also we know the, the order of this highest order is m equal to one, and it is equal to two, right? So therefore, this is the um, this is the term. Uh, this is the case when the uh, degree of the, the denominator is higher by the degree of the numerator by just one, and in that case, the sum of residues the k1 plus k2 should be equal to bm over an. That's equal to one. So that's why I think I initially I, I somehow I got this 0.5 and they find the other one be 0.75. So 0.5 plus 0.75 would be uh, 1.25. So I, I made it, I, I, and then I stopped back, I, I, I checked there, I made a mistake there, and somehow I still made a mistake. Uh, so let me, uh, if I change the color to correct this, um, so the, the here, somehow I still use a 2.5, this should be 0.25, right? this should be 0.7, and this should be 0.25, and of course here this should be 0.25, and this 0.75 shouldn't change it. <laughs> and so this is the error I made last time. Okay, I hope this will correct other things. I'm, I'm, I, I won't uh, do a uh, re, uh, read, I'm, I'm not gonna redo the recording of the last lecture. 
so let's look at the another example. Actually, that that was that was already an example. Let's look at another example of some reviews and, and check if, whether they actually really follow the rules. Okay. Uh, so let me change the color back. Um, so let's see the example here. And in this case, the um, we know the uh, this is the proper function, right? With the simple pose. And in this case, let's see, this is going to be at k1 over s plus 2 and plus k2 over s plus 4. Based on the sum of residues, we know the k1 of k2 should be equal to k1 plus k2 should be equal to since a n, since n equal to 2, m equal to 1. So k1 and k2 should be equal to bm over a n, which is a 6 over 1, which is a 6. It should be 6. Let's see if that's the case. And we, based on the, uh, the partial fraction expansion, the cover off methods, by the way, the cover off method was, uh, was the first, um, uh, was the first invented by a heavy side, uh, who was also credited for the, uh, the union step function also named by him. And in the, uh, in the Google Colab, the Python, the heavy side uh, T, that's the, for the UT. Okay. And uh, in this case, that's going to be S plus 2 times FS. And we value this at the, the pole, which is S minus 2, uh, S equal negative 2. And we're going to times 6S. So S plus uh, 2 be canceled. So I have S plus 4 left. So I may value that at negative 2. So I got a 6 times negative 2. Hopefully I will do the, uh, the numbers correct this time. And uh, so S is negative 2 plus 2 plus 4. <laughs> Can't divide it by 0. And so in this case, I got a negative 6. Uh, no. So I got a 12. Uh, I got a 12. I got a negative 6, right? I think so. So the, the four, 2 on the uh, denominator, so negative 12, negative 6. So the k2 should be 12. Let's see. So k2 should be s plus 4 and fs and s equal negative 4. And in this case, s plus 4 being canceled. So s 6s divided by s plus 2. Then I evaluate this at negative 4. And that should be 6 times negative 4, which is negative 24 divided by um, negative 4 uh, plus 2. So negative 24 divided by negative 2, that's a 12. So therefore, k1 plus k2 is equals, equals 6. So this we evaluate, we verified that uh, really, really is, um, is, 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 is observing this kind of this uh, sum of residue rules, right? Very, very useful rule uh, to, to use, okay? So I'm gonna stop here and look at the uh, two special cases. See you in a moment.